cabinet now has a funny name but the history is that real Hoosiers come from Indiana which as most of us know is the Hoosier state my grandparents are actually from Elkhart Indiana near uh, Fort Worth and this is actually the Hoosier style um, but it's not actually a branded Hoosier sort of like when you go get a coach purse that's a brand coach but you can get a, a purse that looks like that style from TJ Maxx or Marshalls but it's not really a coach um, you can usually tell because at the bottom the legs are much shorter this one shows quite a bit of leg and on a real Hoosier on the back it would actually be made in Hoosier Indiana now, it became popular, and that was really popular in the Depression era, before we had kitchen cabinets. Literally, back in the olden days, Depression era, and before, this would be your whole kitchen. You would usually have a flour sifter and a place for sugar, and you'd have to put all of your different things in here. If you were more upper crust society, you'd have a butler's pantry, where you generally see a Hoosier. So, I call it a Hoosier anyway. I don't see anything wrong with that. But for those purists, it's actually a hutch or a kitchen hutch. But I love them. Um, I did have one that I sold of years ago. You ever have something that you sell and immediately you're like, why did I do that? So probably someday I'll be in the market for a Hoosier again. Um, a real one or a, a not so real one. To me, it doesn't make any difference because they're all really cute. And I just love that farmhouse style. And I think they're really southern. There's something about them that to me just reminds me of going into a southern kitchen and where you could just imagine like jars of sugar and flour and a little rooster container. It's just, it's perfect for displaying pretty much anything. In fact, I think it can be great in a dining room and a living room. I love it.